This aircraft was not as well known or as elegant as the single-engine fighters of World War II, like the BF-109 or FW-190, but it served on from 1938 up until the end of the war, and it was used in many roles and participated at every theater of World War II. So today we will take a look at the Messerschmitt BF-110. The roots of this plane design reach back to the early 1930s, when most of the air forces around the world still used biplanes. Though as aviation technology advanced, these were replaced by the new faster monoplanes, there was one problem with almost every new fighter design, and that was their range. This was not a huge problem if the fighters were used in a defensive role. See the BF-109 and the Spitfire, which were both great interceptors. But in an offensive role, the short range would hinder the use of the aircraft. The German Reich Air Ministry, RLM in short, was looking into developing a long-range fighter aircraft in 1934, although at first the specifications given were kind of a mixed bag, as the original Kampfzerstörer project asked for an aircraft which would be an all-metal monoplane with a three-man crew, twin engines, an internal bomb bay and heavy armament, preferably cannons, so it can fit in as a bomber and a heavy fighter as well. Three companies got into the final rounds of this tender. Messerschmitt with their BF-110 design, Henschel with the HS-124 and Focke-Wulf with the FW-57 model. The Henschel and Focke-Wulf designs followed the specifications to the letter, while on the BF-110 Messerschmitt opted for carrying the bombs externally, allowing the aircraft to be smaller, giving it better flight characteristics. While its opponent, the FW-57, was a very big aircraft, with a length of 16.4 meters and a wingspan of 25 meters, it was bigger than the HG-111 or the B-25 Mitchell bombers. Though Messerschmitt didn't follow the initial specifications when designing their plane without an internal bomb bay, as it turned out, this played in their favor when a year later, in 1935, the specifications were changed. The Kampfzerstörer concept was dropped, and now two separate aircraft was envisioned for two roles. The Zerstörer, Destroyer or Heavy Fighter, and the Schnellbomber or Fast Bomber. The BF-110, being smaller, faster and more nimble than the two other aircrafts in the competition, seemed like the only one that can fulfill the specifications for the Heavy Fighter role. For the Schnellbomber specifications, Messerschmitt actually entered the modified version of the aircraft, the BF-162 where an internal bomb bay was implemented and the nose was changed to a glazed design to house a bombardier, but this concept eventually lost out to the JU-88 design. Meanwhile, the original BF-110 concept performed much better in the flight test than its adversaries. It was more maneuverable and with its Daimler DB600 engines much faster. The first V1 prototype rode out of the factory in May 1936 and participated in several test flights. It had a very good speed, reaching 515 km an hour, but its maneuverability was somewhat worse than expected. The BF-110 won out against the Henschel and focke -Wolf designs, and it was accepted by the Ministry. The Ministry ordered four pre-production aircraft, and the first one was delivered in January 1937. But the delays with the planned Daimler engines forced Messerschmitt to use U-Mode-210B engines on these planes which producing only 610 horsepower were very underpowered. And the maximum speed of these variants was only 434 km an hour. As we mentioned, the A0 was the first pre-production variant. These were fitted with the UMO 210 engines and featured four 7.92mm machine guns in the nose. They are easy to recognize from the deep radiator intakes under the engine nacelles. They were followed by the B0 version, which, though the Daimler engines were ready by that time, still featured UMO engines during the testing. They had heavier armament, consisting additional two 20mm cannons. The nose of the aircraft changed from the sloping design used on the prototypes to a more pointy version. A small batch of the B-1 series aircraft was sent to Spain during the Civil War, 
but they arrive too late to participate in combat. The next sea variant was the one that gone to large scale production, and it was the main heavy fighter of the Luftwaffe when the war broke out. The originally planned DB600 engines were cancelled, so this variant featured the new DB601 engines developing 1060 horsepower each. These engines finally raised the maximum speed of the aircraft to the levels it had on the prototypes. At 541 km an hour, it was more than 100 km an hour faster than it was with the Yumo engines. With the new engine's higher performance came the need for more cooling as well, so the radiator intakes were moved to the wings, next to the engine nacelles. And this variant was the first where the round wing tips were changed to square ones. The D variant concentrated on expanding the range, by dropping the 20mm cannons and having options to carry external fuel tanks. Like the so-called Dackelbach on the belly, or drop tanks under the wings. The following E version, introduced at spring 1941, was mainly used as fighter bomber with stronger airframe and capability to carry up to 2000 kg of bombs. This was the first model featuring the little rectangular vent on the nose. This variant had a very short production run as it was quickly followed by the F model, arriving in summer 1941. It was basically the same as the E model, with a stronger airframe, and the F4 model was the first real night fighter version. During this time, a more advanced replacement of the BF-110 was in development, the ME-210, which on paper had improved characteristics compared to the BF-110, but during the flight test in early 1942, so many design faults were found, it took Messerschmitt more than 100 prototypes and pre-production planes to work them out. The type was eventually ordered in production, but it showed so bad handling that after only 90 units delivered, it was cancelled. Later it was developed into the more advanced ME410 design. Since the bf ones replacement was cancelled, an improved version of the original plane was introduced. This was the G variant. It featured the new DB605 engines, developing 1475 horsepower each. It had ground attack variants featuring 37mm cannons, just like the Stuka before, or 30mm MK108 cannons, and options to carry rockets under the wings, and gun pods under the fuselage. On this picture you can see a very heavily armed variant, featuring four 30mm MK108 cannons in the nose, and a gun pod with a pair of 20mm cannons. But maybe the most well known is the G4 Night Fighter version. The production of the G model started in May 1942, and it was in production until February 1945. The BF-110 was 12 meters long, with a wingspan of 16.2 meters. It had an empty weight of 4425 kg, and a maximum takeoff weight of 6749 kg. It was powered by two Daimler DB601 engines, developing 1060 horsepower each. With the help of these engines, it could reach a maximum speed of 541 km an hour and a cruise speed of 489 km an hour. It had a service ceiling of 10,000 meters, a combat range of 850 km, or a ferry range of 1,090 km. The plane's armament consisted of two 20mm cannons and four 7.92mm machine guns in the nose, plus one 7.92mm machine gun in the rear. The BF-110 first saw combat when Germany attacked Poland in 1939, when more than 100 of them were ready for action. They claimed numerous victories against the Polish fighters and escorted German bombers to attack Warsaw. Later they participated in the invasion of Denmark and Norway, and in this campaign they excelled as fighter bombers. They also did well against Allied bombers, making good use of their heavy armament. During the Western campaign, again the BF-110 was used very effectively for ground attacks. 
but as the campaign neared its end in 1940, they met the British Hurricanes and Spitfires, and these encounters immediately showed the weakness of the aircraft. It was easily outclassed by the more agile single-engine fighters in a dogfight. These shortcomings became very obvious during the Battle of Britain, when it was used to escort the bombers because of its longer range than other German fighters. The BF-110 was actually successful when they were used as originally intended, flying high, scouting for enemy fighters, then used their speed and firepower to dive and attack. But when used in close escort, flying alongside the slow bombers, they lost all their advantage, and they were hopelessly outmatched by the agile British fighters. But despite the bad reputation this caused, the high losses of the BF-110 during the Battle of Britain were more of the faults of the German tactics than of the aircrafts. Not long after the Battle of Britain, in May 1941, Rudolf Hess actually used one of these planes to fly to England in hopes of negotiating a peace deal. The BF-110 fared better in North Africa, where they were used in many roles, escorting J-87 dive bombers, strafing and bombing ground targets, and protecting the sea lanes. In 1942 they were used for convoy escort as well, over the Mediterranean. On the Eastern Front they participated in Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union, where they were heavily used as ground attackers, and their heavy armament was perfect for the role. They did quite well against the Soviet Air Force as well, as most of the Soviet fighters were outdated I-15 and I-16 models, which were much slower than the BF-110, and they carried a relatively light armament. But by 1942, as the more modern fighters, like the Lock 3 and the Yak-1 started to appear in numbers, the BF-110 losses started to mount. In the second half of the war, the type was used increasingly against the Allied bombers, which again fit the BF-110 well, as with its heavy armament, especially when equipped with the 30mm MK-108 cannon, it could destroy any bomber in seconds. Their daytime bomber hunting, however, didn't last long. They again were outmatched by the faster and more maneuverable P-51s. They again found success as night fighters though. The aircraft had space for a dedicated radar operator, and in the nose enough room for the installation of the radar. The BF-110 was successful in this role, but the added equipment and the third crew member further decreased the aircraft's performance. From time to time the night fighter units were called in to help at daytimes too, but these actions usually resulted in heavy losses. Apart from combat use, the BF-110s were also used to tow the giant Messerschmitt Mi-321 gliders. This was a dangerous task, as three of them were needed in formation to get the massive gliders off the ground, and several times the takeoffs ended in a crash. You can learn more about this in my earlier video about the Mi-321 and Mi-323. If you're interested in their history, check it out. The BF-110 was not as nimble as the most famous fighters of World War II, and had a bad reputation because of the high losses in the Battle of Britain. But it was actually a very versatile plane, a good design, and stayed in service all through the war. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.